Kia ora, I'm Ryan McFadgen from Tall Poppy Real Estate here in wonderful Wanganui. And today we're starting our new educational series all about buying and selling property here in Wanganui. So to start the series off, we're going to break it down into a few different steps uh, and I'm hopeful excited that you're going to be following along with this and if you're a buyer or a seller it's going to definitely help you on your journey. So let's jump into the video today. In the first instance we're going to have a look at selling your property uh, and we're going to have a look today at step one of selling your property, all the things that you need to get done before you even ask a real estate salesperson to come in the door and give you an appraisal. Righty ho, let's jump to it. Step one, selling your property. All right, so first things first, when we're looking at uh, selling a property, it isn't actually something that people do that often. In fact, when we break down and have a look at the statistics for our homeowners here in New Zealand, most people will look at uh, selling their house or upsizing or downsizing every five to seven years. So when you think about that in the scheme of things, that is quite a big period of time. Uh, and that's probably only just been in the last probably 20 years or so. Uh, my grandmother, for example, has been living uh, in her home now for over 50 years. So there are plenty of people that find a home and stick with it. Uh, but the way that maybe the modern world works, uh, a lot of people are obviously moving for work. Uh, sometimes it's an affordability factor as well, so they're needing to upsize their house for growing families and move somewhere else. So what we're seeing at the moment is about every five to seven years people are making the move. Now when we have a think about how the world moves and what has changed in the last five to seven years, if we try and cast our minds back five or seven years and have a think how it was in that time, um, I think we'd see first up that a lot has changed with technology. Uh, without delving into it, a lot has changed with the world and what we have to deal with as well. But there have been significant changes in that period of five to seven years and real estate is no different. So hopefully throughout this uh, guide that we're going to do for you in these uh, series, you're going to get a bit of an idea of how some of the things have changed and some of the things that you'll need to do as a potential seller of a property to ensure you're ready to go. Now, this is coming from a place of experience. Obviously, I do work in the real estate industry, so I do this for a living. Uh, but moving here to Wanganui in the last year or so, I had to put my home on the market in New Plymouth, which is where I came from. And even though I'm in the industry and working with it every day, actually being a vendor, there are a few surprises along the way that as a real estate salesperson, I don't need to come across. So I'm going to share those with you today as well. So anyway, today is all about step number one. So let's have a look at the first thing that you'll need to do if you are thinking of putting your property on the market. So a lot of the time, people would say, well, find yourself a real estate salesperson, get out there, have a look at some open homes, compare your house to other ones, get a feel for how much you think that your property could be worth. But I would say right there, wool nally just a little bit, and uh, we'll start from the very basics of what needs to happen before you put your home on the market. Now, obviously, if you're at the point where you're thinking it is time to sell, you've probably had all of those conversations with, uh, with your family, uh, with your partner, your significant other, whoever is your decision-making team. So you've probably sat down and had all of those conversations and going from experience for my wife and I and our family, this took a long time. But make sure you do go through and have a look at all of the pros and cons, because particularly if you're moving regions like we did, there's a lot of connections that you are leaving and things that you have to start again. Um, so make sure that with your decision to sell that you feel as though it really is the best way to go, that everyone is all on board. So first things first that you need to have a look at when uh, you're looking at putting your home on the market is uh, to sort out a whether or not you're going to be buying into another property, uh, you're downsizing or upsizing. Now for a lot of people it is possibly upsizing, particularly if you're in the same age group as I am. So one of the things that you need to do is have a chat to a financial provider and in this case I would recommend going towards a mortgage broker. Uh, but if you've got a good relationship with your bank you can have a chat to them as well. That is going to be your first thing. You need to have a think about how much you're actually going to be able to afford to spend for your upsize into your next house. And even if it's a downsize as well, because of the way the prices have gone, uh, for some people there may need to be a little bit of lending involved with doing a downsize as well. So have a good chat to a professional about the type amount of money that you will be able to access in order to buy a property. Uh, mortgage brokers are a good way to go because they're going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And particularly with some of the changes that we've seen uh, in the financial institution institutes in the last uh, quarter of the last year. Uh, we've seen that it has become a lot more difficult. So make sure that you understand all that type of thing, particularly if you are going out and about to look at other houses. There's nothing more disappointing than falling in love with a place and saying, yes, let's put our house on the market so we can put an offer on that one and going to the bank or a mortgage broker and finding out that from a 
affordability aspect that is not going to happen for you. So that definitely is the first thing to do. Um, and I know that house buying and house selling is a very emotional thing, but I think when it comes to these big life decisions, getting those things sorted out first is definitely the way to go. So step number two that you definitely need to have a look at is things have changed quite a bit, particularly with selling property when it comes to anti-money laundering. Uh, also called AML. Um, so there's a few things in place that you need to uh, get done to put your home on the market now. Now it's nothing too much, uh, but in order to list your property uh, with a real estate agent, and even if you are going to sell it privately, this will come along for you as well. You need to be able to show two forms of ID and uh, also a proof of address. So if you don't have a passport, uh, it's often a good idea to get yourself a birth certificate particularly if you don't have a license as well, maybe a gun license or something else like that that can go alongside it so you can prove who you are. Because for a lot of people, particularly if you're putting an offer on a property first and needing to sell your house to get that one, uh, things like AML can hold things up just a little bit. So it's a really good idea to get those type of things sorted before you even uh, think about going to uh, going to market or speaking to a real estate salesperson. So a really good idea in this uh, first instance to find yourself a lawyer. They're gonna be a really important cog uh, in directing you in the purchasing and selling of your property. Uh, so my advice with that one when it comes to lawyers is uh, often word of mouth is a really good one. Lawyers are not things that we use all of the time, uh, but they're very, very important for legal proceedings. And often if you have a family member who's used a lawyer, uh, it's a good idea to uh, keep it in the family. But ask around a bit about that uh, because of the wonders of the internet now, of course, most law firms have fantastic web pages that you can jump onto and find out a lot about the company, their values and who works there as well, but they're going to be a very important cog in the selling of your property as well as the buying of a property also. So it pays uh, to sort that out. Actually call up and have a chat to someone. Uh, don't necessarily look on a website and go, oh, that person's name will do. We're just going to go with them. Find out how that they can help you and uh, some of the things they can do for you. So those are some of the things that you need to get done before you even contemplate going on the market. So that's step one. I want you to tune back in again at some other stage. We're going to have a look at number two, which is all that fun stuff, having a look at the value of your home, choosing a real estate professional, and then moving into actually preparing your home for sale. Hopefully you got something out of today's video. Look forward to bringing you some more in the future.